if you want to be a long term investor who doesn't care about buying in the morning, selling in the afternoon, then for you, index funds make a lot of sense. everyone and welcome to Learn with RG. I'm Avan Dubash. This is episode 2 and with me of course is Radhika Gupta, MD and CEO at Edelweiss Mutual Funds. And today let's discuss ETF versus index funds. And I actually got a call from my mom one day asking me, Ki someone pitched me an ETF. Ye ETF kya hota hai? And I think when your mom asks you, that means you know that there's really some buzz being generated about this. So Let's understand simply. Yeah, I've also got a call from my grandmom actually <laughs> asking me about ETF. So I think the buzz is real. You, we talked about passive investing in the, the first episode. And we said that, you know, ETFs and index funds are two ways to do passive investing. They're, they're, they're the brothers or sisters or whatever you would like to call it. Inherently, actually, I wanted to tell people that ETFs and index funds are not very different. They aim to do the same thing, which is track an underlying index. It could be an equity index, a debt index, a gold index, but they aim to meet the market. There are nuances that are different between them that we can chat about, but fundamentally, they're very similar. And fundamentally, whether your mother invested in a Nifty ETF or a Nifty index fund, She's approximately going to earn the same return and she's approximately going to have the same experience and upside and downside. But depending on what you need, you can use ETFs and index funds differently because of their unique features. Yeah, which actually brought my mom to ask me the next question, but aren't index funds and ETFs the same thing? So let's understand the nuances of how exactly they are different and when you need to use either. So I think there are five, six key differences. First, you have to understand, uh, let's start with index fund. Many people are familiar with mutual funds. Uh, index fund is basically a mutual fund that mirrors an index. Unlike an actively managed mutual fund where the fund manager is taking views on which stocks in the index to hold or not hold and how much. In an index fund, nobody is taking any views. You are just mirroring an index. And all the standard features of mutual funds, process of mutual fund, buying, selling, everything is very similar to your normal mutual fund experience. An ETF is a passive fund that trades like a stock. It trades on the exchange. So it's closer to a stock in its behavior. It also mirrors an index, as I said. But many of the behavioral components are similar to a stock. So let, let me give you an example. Uh, you know, if, if you bought any stock, how often does its price change? It changes every minute, every second, whatever it is, through the time that the market is open, through the time that the stock market is open. Similarly, an ETF has an NAV or value that changes real time throughout the day, depending on market movements. An index fund, however, has a price or an NAV that comes out once a day. So one is intraday, real time, one is once a day. Uh, how do you buy and sell? Uh, again, you'll see similarity to a stock and mutual fund here. With an index fund, you go to the asset management company, you have 1000 rupees, you give the 1000 rupees, you'll get some units, there'll be an NAV. With an ETF, you buy on the exchange. You buy a stock in the exchange, you buy an ETF on the exchange, if you are above a certain size, 25 crores, you can go and deal with the AMC directly. But most of us buy and sell ETFs on the exchange. These are some of the key differences. I guess you'd say maybe like an ETF is a mutual fund with unique features. ETF is a mutual fund with, uh, uh, an ETF is a mutual fund that trades like a stock. With features that trade like a stock, some things are similar. For instance, both are highly transparent. So, you know, Sometimes people think ETF is more transparent than index fund. No, both are very similar. Holding mode is different. So an ETF you hold in a DMAT account, like a stock. A mutual fund you don't hold in a DMAT account. ETFs, you get a daily disclosure of portfolios. Mutual funds, you usually get a weekly or monthly disclosure of portfolio. 
but exactly what you said a mutual fund that trades like a stock with the features of a stock and actually it was warren buffett who had gone on record to say that for most people the best thing to do is own the s&p 500 100. index fund so really getting an endorsement but let's also understand how exactly it works some jo you know etf i want to put my money how should i go about it so you know and again i start with index funds because it's simpler and then explain etfs in a context so agar aapko mutual fund khareedna hai तो आपकी डीलिंग किससे होगी आप कंपनी से डील करेंगे आप जाके कैश या आई मीन चेक वट एवर इट इज कंपनी को जाके देंगे एंड द कंपनी विल गिव यू यूनिट्स एंड दैट्स हाउ यू बिन बाइंग इंडेक्स फंड्स म्यूचुअल फंड्स एक्सेट्रा विद एन ई टी एफ एक्चुअली यू आर नॉट डीलिंग विद द कंपनी यूर डीलिंग विद अदर इन्वेस्टर्स लाइक अगेन इफ यू गो एंड बाय यूनिट्स ऑफ एक्स वाई जी स्टॉक यू बाइंग इट फ्रॉम एन अदर इन्वेस्टर हु सेलिंग दोज यूनिट्स सो विद एन ई टी एफ यू आर गोइंग टू द एक्सचेंज some other investor is selling units of that etf and you're buying the etf in an index fund when you give cash there's actually a fund manager out there taking your cash buying those 50 stocks or however many stocks and creating that unit in etf the units are already around existing investors are buying and selling them and you know there's there's an important nuance here on etfs that when you're buying and selling from other people there's a very obvious point those other people need to exist mm -hmm. you need to make sure that there are adequate buyers and sellers that is the you know the technical term we use for it which is thrown around is liquidity yeah. that an etf needs to have liquidity because tomorrow if you hold an etf and you want to go sell it and there's nobody to buy it what will you do yeah. you know it's like when you buy a stock you don't go deal with the company directly you want liquidity so when in etf liquidity matters and uh, if we were to also understand the minimum investment required mm -hmm. what would that be in terms of yield in a mutual fund typically the minimum investment is whatever the amc sets most amcs have got small numbers 100 rupees 500 rupees i think most amcs are at 100 rupees now in an etf again there's a nuance there the minimum investment if you were to buy from the exchange which is to buy and sell from other people is whatever it takes to buy one unit of that so if one unit costs Thousand rupees, then it's thousand rupees. If one unit costs hundred rupees, then it's hundred rupees. If whatever it is, if you have more than twenty-five crores to invest, then you are allowed to go and buy directly from the asset management company. But otherwise, if you're buying on the exchange, it's whatever a minimum unit costs. It's like what is the minimum investment to buy onions? It's the minimum. What's what's the price of one onion? it's exactly that okay uh, so can you one say that if i don't have a dmat account and if i'm planning to invest in passive funds index funds would be the way to go if you don't have a dmat account and you don't want to open a dmat account if you want to be a long term investor who doesn't care about buying in the morning selling in the afternoon then for you index funds make a lot of sense however if you are that investor who's a short term trader who wants to buy and sell morning evening who likes the facility of a stock and having everything there then an etf construct makes a lot more sense for you so are you trader are you long term investor sorry so really pick your brains because when my mom asked me a question i better have a good answer so yes you should <laughs> Okay now let's talk about the cost of owning them because there is a number of factors that one mm -hmm. needs to look into transaction cost expense ratio radhika break it down for us I should I'm very happy you asked about cost because log people are obsessed with cost and you know I understand that but they don't realize ki cost ki bina alag alag bucket hoti hain and ETF and index funds have different uh cost nuances so there are two costs that are common to both etf and index funds they exist whether you buy an etf they exist whether you buy an index fund one is the expense ratio of the scheme it's essentially the money the asset management company is charging to manage that particular product it is usually a number in basis points 5 basis points 10 basis points 15 basis points it's available on fact sheets websites etc etc so that that is cost one it exists in an etf it exists in an index fund the second cost that is common to an etf and index fund is this notion of tracking difference now what is tracking difference we said that any passive fund whether it is etf or index fund mirrors some index some benchmark again i'm going to take the nifty for example if in the last one year the nifty has given 30% that's what the benchmark is given when you go on nse india side that's what the benchmark is given 
the fund's attempt has been to replicate the benchmark as well as possible. But because of buying and selling, all kinds of small differences, trading, etc., instead of 30, it's been able to generate 29.8. That 20, that 30 minus 29.8, that 0.2 percent or 20 basis point is what we call tracking difference that will exist in an ETF, that will exist in an index fund. So, these two are common costs, ETF and index fund. Ki. Now, an ETF, because you are buying it and selling it on an exchange, has three other costs that we have to think about. One is the cost of doing transactions. When you are buying a stock again on an exchange, there is a transaction cost. Uh, it could be brokerage levied, for instance, any transaction related cost that happens. The second is, again, when you are buying a stock, there is something called impact cost because there is liquidity, liquidity, all of that. So, impact cost is there. Third is, because an ETF needs a DMAT account, there is often a cost to maintaining your DMAT account. So, when you are looking at the cost difference between ETF and index fund, it is very important that you total all these costs. Sometimes what people do is, they will just say ETF expense ratio versus index fund expense ratio and not realize there are many other costs associated. So, I noticed that while you were explaining this, you use the word impact cost huh. a lot. Huh. If we could just understand what is exactly. So, impact cost is what is in stock or in ETF. Mein bhi hoti hai. Say you are supposed to uh, buy it at 10 rupees, hmm. but market market liquidity nahi hai, various things happen. Because of illiquidity, instead of 10, you bought it for 10 and a half. You actually ended up buying it for 10 and a half. That half rupee is what we call impact cost. And it exists, as I said, whether you buy a stock or whether you buy any. Now, let's understand how to choose index hmm. funds and ETFs. Yeah. What are the factors? After you have chosen ki mujhe is benchmark, ka, which, whichever benchmark it is, whichever index you want to track, you have chosen, then you need to look at a few things. One is, of course, we talked about the expense ratio that the AMC charges. So, you will compare the expense ratio of your ETF to the expense ratio of your index fund. You, trading activity also is important. So, trading yeah. activity may you will think about impact cost, you will think about how much impact cost there is and impact cost is a function of liquidity and trading activity. So, in the case of an ETF, we said that you are going to be buying and selling from other people, liquidity is important. Generally, if an ETF has a higher degree of liquidity, more people are buying and selling, then that impact cost should be lower. If it has lower liquidity, then impact cost should be higher. The third thing you will look at is this concept of tracking error and tracking difference. I talked a little bit about tracking difference, but essentially how efficiently are you getting the returns of the index that you want. Hmm. So, I guess, uh, you know, an ETF with a minimal tracking error is obviously preferable to one with a greater degree. Yeah, so an ETF with lower tracking difference and tracking error is better. Uh, in India, if you look at equity ETFs on average, I think that tracking error should be about 25 basis points. In impact cost should be about 30 odd basis points. Mm -hmm. It's important for investors that they tracking error bhi dekhna chahiye, tracking difference. Bhi dekhna chahiye. Tracking difference, I had explained that if your Nifty ka return is say 30 percent and your index funds return is 29 percent, then 1 percent is the tracking difference. Tracking error is a way to look at that tracking difference, but you look at it every day and you see, is there a tracking difference every day? Essentially, without getting very technical, you are trying to measure, is the fund manager very efficiently able to replicate the index on a day-to-day -day basis, which is what matters for you as an investor, because so you have to look at tracking error and difference both. Okay, so it's important. And uh, now for, uh, you know, the investors uh, to understand what is more suitable, ETF or index fund, uh, would it be safe to say a point that you have been bringing up that if you're a long-term investor, I don't want to capture any intraday moves, index funds is the way to go? Yeah, if you're a long-term investor, then honestly, uh, you don't need to worry too much about ETFs. If you are an intraday trader, then you absolutely may want to use ETFs. Uh, as I said, if you want the flexibility of real-time pricing, then I think ETFs work for you better than an index fund. I think there is one more scenario uh, that ETFs work well versus an index fund. One thing to keep in mind since we spoke about costs. If when you aggregate all these costs, the ETF turns out to be much cheaper than an index fund and that is 
true in some cases i think in the case of nifty etc you know the t or the total expense ratio on nifty mm. may be much cheaper than the total expense ratio of a nifty index fund the etf may be much cheaper than an index fund and even if you add all this dmat cost impact cost transaction cost all of that it may be much cheaper to own an etf that may be one other case where you have to think about it but as i said don't obsess over cost without understanding the cost so i think we broadly understood who it's more suitable for and i was actually looking it up that etfs were launched for the first time in the yeah. us in 1993 and since then of course they've gained popularity not just in america but in india as well but still they're more popular in more developed markets and the us ye kyun you know there is an india may i mean you you mentioned what happened with your mother right <laughs> india may people have this thing that because ETFs are very popular in US I must do ETFs in India and you have to realize the context is a little different now in the US what people don't realize in India is that ETFs and index fund have a difference in how they are taxed so in an index fund in the US dividends are taxable in an index fund in the US and when the fund manager is doing buying and selling in an index fund that is subject to taxation or it says in the us in an etf one dividends are not taxed so they are more tax efficient and you are not taxed for the buying and selling within an etf you are only taxed if you buy or sell the actual etf unit itself so the etf is passed through most etfs are passed through and there is no dividend tax so there is a tax difference so which is why us investors have a logical reason to prefer etfs in india etfs and index funds both have passed through taxation there is no difference if you invest in an equity etf versus an equity index fund debt etf versus debt index fund so your decision making cannot be colored by taxation in india taxation ke karan aapko etf versus index fund choose karne ki zarurat hai but definitely that's that's the case right in terms of being more tax efficient globally in the us they are more tax efficient in the us also etf they are more popular in the us etf cost versus index fund cost are often much lower in india that is not the case costs are comparable okay all right uh, so there you have it understanding a little bit more about etfs and about uh, you know the passive style of investing essentially as radhika highlighted if you're a long term investor you don't want to bother with capturing intraday moves uh, then an index fund is for you whereas if you want to trade in etfs looking at short term gains that is the route it is important as well to keep in mind the cost of owning expense ratio transaction cost dmat maintenance costs as well that's all important and when it comes to etfs or exchange traded funds they mostly trade as we said on an intraday basis clocking profits at the end of the day so essentially long term investors beginners if you're a cost conscious investor then that is really the way to go so i thanks all of our viewers for tuning in to this episode of learn with rg do remember we've got our next episode lined up where we will be talking about smart beta and factor based passive funds Follow us on the social media platforms Instagram Twitter and subscribe on Edelweiss Mutual Funds YouTube channel and Radhika thanks as always for making it so simple for our viewers thank you subscribe to our YouTube channel Edelweiss Mutual Fund and click on the bell icon for notifications mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully